Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, Paractin in Inflammatory Processes, Upper Respiratory Tract Infections and Common Cold. I'm Amber Lowry, Senior Editor of Special Projects for Nutritional Outlook, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are pleased to bring you this symposium presented by Nutritional Outlook and sponsored by HP Ingredients. I would like to share a statement from our sponsor. HP Ingredients Corporation, founded in 2001 by Annie Eng, is a manufacturer and supplier of safe, branded, patented, science-based, clinically proven nutraceutical herbal extracts. HP Ingredients' mission is to maintain its reputation as a foremost pioneer in the global natural health industry by delivering unique ingredients backed by rigorous scientific research. HP Ingredients is a fast-growing, innovative nutraceutical company that brings to market standardized, patented botanical extracts and privately funds clinical studies in collaboration with globally prestigious universities and research institutions located in Malaysia, Chile, Italy, and the United States in support of these products. HP Ingredients' specialized services include custom product development, contract packaging services, and private labeling of cutting edge dietary supplements and nutritional products. We have a few important announcements before we begin. This symposium is designed to be interactive and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found on the right-hand side of the screen. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the small square icon in the upper right-hand corner of the slide window, or by hovering your mouse over the lower right-hand corner and dragging the window to the desired size. The size will advance automatically during the event. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing this presentation, please click on the question mark help widget in the dock at the bottom of your presentation window. And now I'd like to introduce today's speaker. We're pleased to be joined today by Dr. Juan Hanke. Professor Juan Hanke, Scientific Director of HP Ingredients, is a Doctor of Veterinary Sciences and full professor at the Institute of Pharmacology at the Austral University of Chile. He was awarded postdoctoral fellowships at the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry the Hanover Medical School in Germany, and at the World Health Organization at the Charing Cross Hospital, Faculty of Medicine, University of London. He is a pioneer in medicinal plant investigation, researching and developing in particular Andrographis paniculata and Aristotelia, excuse me, Aero, <laughs> Aristotelia silensis, or Mockyberry. Um, additionally, Dr. Hanke has published over 70 scientific papers and 20 patents. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Hanke. Please go ahead and get us started. Thanks for being here and welcome to Paractin uh, Immune Health. Um, Paractin in a nutshell is a nutraceutical is a safe, unique, standardized, patented, science-tested, sustainable, harvested nutraceutical. There you are. You can see on the left side um, neutrophil and on the right lymphocyte. The main botanical of paractin is a medicinal plant named as Andrographis paniculata. It's a small bush uh, that grows about two to three meters, and uh, it can be found in India, mainly in China, the northern Malay Peninsula, in Thailand, Indonesia, and Java. It is bo both wild grown and cultivated. What does it contain? The main constituent of Andrographis paniculata is known as andrographolite and is a bitter colorless neutral crystalline substance 
And uh, it's a dipper pen containing a gamma lactone ring connected to a decaline ring system via an unsaturated CO moiety. Uh, Dieter pens are a class of chemical compounds that can be biosynthesized by plants, animals, and fungi. And uh, well, um, for those that are not chemists, uh, the, the interesting part of this is that this has allowed the possibility of making many uh, similar compounds to andrographolite that have shown biological activity. Um, as regards to the ethnobotanical use, in the ancient tradition, Andrographis paniculata has been used in the system of medicine in China and the Ayurvedic uh, system of medicine in India. It can be found in the textbooks of pharmacology and therapeutics as uh, in 1901 and then the Pharmacographica Indica in London in 1890. And the structure was established in 1911 by Golter. The other interesting part is that uh, Andrographis paniculata is used as a food ingredient and is an extremely bitter flavoring substance and is uh, therefore called as the king of bitters and is indexed by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food in England and the Council of Europe in 1981. Uh, Andrographis paniculata has a long tradition as a herbal remedy for gastric disorders, anti-inflammatory and treatment of symptoms of common cold. In 1997, the World Health Organization uh, um, put the monograph on, on the plant on Andrographis paniculata as part of the program of traditional medicine. And paractin is a dried standardized extract containing a total of 50% total andrographolite, and there you can see the HPLC, where you have the different peaks at the different retention times, which is mainly andrographolite, neoandrographolite, and deoxyandrographolite. Well, um, andrographolite and the related compounds has been uh, um, tested uh, for their pharmacological activities in several animal species where it can reduce fever, edema, and inflammation. Today, we will concentrate our uh, focus on the respiratory system. The other interesting point is that the anti-inflammatory effect of andrographolite and the related compounds have less side effects than corticoids, corticoids and common non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And the best pharmacological effect has been shown for andrographolite followed by deoxyandrographolite and neoandrographolite. The anti-inflammatory mechanism is supposed to be different from the conventional anti-inflammatory drugs. On the right here, you can see a bronchi when it's affected by asthma, you have the vasoconstriction. Then if we go to the mechanism of action, just to give a briefing, um, nuclear factor kappa V is one of the master key that controls different inflammatory processes. Therefore, when it is activated, this transcription factor, it regulates uh, pro-inflammatory genes that can trigger different types of diseases. In this, in this case, we have viral infection, and on the other hand, another autoimmune disease, which is multiple sclerosis, which uh, affects, you know, uh, different uh, 
uh, person around the world. So uh, if we go now to the mechanism of action of paractin, we have a receptor at the cell membrane, and the, uh, it can be summarized as three different mechanisms of action where the main one is the inhibition of nf kappa v which uh, uh, affects the release of pro-inflammatory genes, basically uh, interleukin-8, interleukin-1, ENOS, TNF-alpha, COX-2. Then another one is the interference with the nuclear factor of activated T cells, and um, this is uh, the kinase. When it's activated, you know, it's activating the nuclear factor T, and andrographolite is able to block this uh, pathway. Then there is a third um, um, transcription factor that is affected, which is the modulation of AP1 and STAT3, which is other transcription uh, um, pathways, uh, meaning, you know, that andrographolite blocks the gene proteins of becoming over reactive. And this, of course, you know, has the end results of um, uh, blocking the pro-inflammatory genes and reducing interleukin 1, 2, 6, and 10. Now, if we uh, go uh, some history back in, 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 in 2005, uh, together with a group of scientists, we were able to describe for the first time that the active principle of paractin, namely andrographolite, was able to interfere NF-kappa B function. This another group in China was also able to discover the same events in another type of cells, namely endothelial cells. On the left side, you can see a Western blot where the lines, you know, in, in black indicate, you know, the intensity of the activity. And you can see when you stimulate the neutrophilic cells with a PATH, which is a platelet aggregating factor, there is an increase in the activity, and with different concentration of 10, 50, and 100 milli micromolar of andrographolite, you get, you get a clear reduction of the activity. And um, if we go here to the right, you can see also the COX-2 activity in the presence of the PATH activity, you have an intense line, meaning that there is an intense activity of COX-2, and when you uh, aggregate the andrographolite, you can see that the intensity is decreased. The same is when you use another activator like leukocyte activating factor, the effect is very similar. Uh, now there was another paper we published on the um, a nuclear fat uh, function, and here on the right side you have the interleukin production and in the presence of cyclosporin, which is a PKC activator or crotonoid, you have a high activity, and in the presence of cyclosporin, which is a immunosuppressant, you have a decrease in the activity and on different concentration with andrographolite, with 10, 50, and 100, you have significant reduction in this transcription factor. And in the same way, we can see here the in a fat production and also the uh, nuclear factor nf kappa b um, If we go back in, to the 80s, um, in Sweden particularly, there was a product named as Kanyang, and I think today it still exists, and it became one of the most popular products for common colds. And uh, back in the, um, in the 95, we were the first group to publish in the Western world of the effect of an extract of Andrographis paniculata able to decrease 
the symptoms and improvement of the recovery of common cold. And one of the main um, uh, clinical symptoms and signs we studied was the uh, tiredness, which was uh, significantly reduced, shivering, sore throat, and uh, muscular ache, rhinitis, sinus pains, and headache, and lymphatic swellings. And this encouraged us to do a, a second study, which was a, a study where we um, studied the prevention, the possible preventive effect of an extract of andrographis paniculata uh, as a double blind study. And um, the results showed that um, there was a protective effect for the Kanyang of, of 33% over the placebo, meaning that the relative risk of catching a cold was 2.1 uh, times lower for the Kanyan group. Then we continue with um, our studies and publish another st uh, uh, paper using a visual analog scale uh, with a standardized extract of andrographis paniculata in a double blind placebo controlled study and where we again were able to uh, um, see that there was a reduction in tiredness, sore throat, sleeplessness, and na nasal secretion. We concluded that uh, andrographis paniculata had a high degree of effect, effect, efficacy in reducing the prevalence and intensity on symptoms of uncomplicated common cold beginning but day two of the treatment. So after that, you know, there were many clinical trials done in the Western world as well as in, uh, in the Asiatic countries. And uh, just relatively recently, there was this uh, meta-analysis, which is a systemic review uh, on the effect of different uh, andrographis paniculata uh, products for the symptomatic relief of acute respiratory tract infections. And uh, as you can see, there were 33 uh, randomized controlled trials um, um, studied and evaluated in this uh, publication with 7,175 patients that were included. And uh, the results showed clearly that andrographis paniculata was able to reduce the cough, sore throat as compared to the placebo, and uh, also when using alone or with user care, there was an improve in the all, all symptoms of the upper uh, tract infection compared with the placebo. And also andrographis paniculata alone or uh, plus usual care, shortened the duration of cough, sore throat, and sick leave time to resolution when compared to usual care. And the other interesting thing was that there was no major adverse event reported, uh, uh, and some of them were mainly gastrointestinal. So um, nowadays there exists a uh, a lot of studies that indicate that andrographis paniculata is um, a product that has um, interesting results in uh, the resolution of common cold and upper respiratory tract infections. Now, if we go to another uh, interesting uh, uh, information, on the left hand here, we have the effect uh, uh, paractin in inflammation aging on the healthy um, alveoli. Uh, you have uh, the lining of the um, alveoli is very resisting to uh, uh, microbial permeabilizing factor, but as we age you can see that there is an increased susceptibility to infection due to the oxidative stress that inhibits the antibacterial and uh, also the viral uh, in infection. 
this is uh, occurred as we age. So there are now uh, many, many studies that are looking at the effect of the pure compound in, uh, for example, in this case, we can see uh, the effect of andrographolite in cigarette smoke induced lung disease that leads to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease where you see a reduction in the lung cellular infiltrate, basically in white you have the control, in, in, in black you have the DMSO, which is another control, and then the different uh, concentration of andrographolite 5 and 10 milligrams, you can see that there is a reduction in the total cell number in macrophages with the 10 milligram and also lymphocyte and also in the neutrophils. Also, the andrographolite was able to reduce the matrix metalloproteinase, uh, specifically the number eight and nine with the different concentration of five and 10 milligram. And also the inflammation score with 5 and 10 was reduced by the product. And also the lung cytokine, ENF alpha and interleukin 1 beta. Um, another interesting uh, study showed that uh, andrographolite was able to protect against uh, LAPS induced acute lung injury via inactivation on NF kappa B. And here you have a, a high dose and a low dose, and it was able to, in, in blue, you have the, the control, and uh, when you apply the uh, low doses of, uh, or the high doses, you get a significant reduction in the total cell neutrophil macrophages and lymphocytes. And this is important because, you know, um, it affects, you know, the lungs by sepsis, severe bactemia, pneumonia, trauma, and burn. Then uh, this is another study showing that uh, the vascular adhesion molecule number one and vascular endothelial factor are increased when the lung is inflamed encouraging the inflamed cells to bind to blood cells and growth of new blood vessels. However, too much of this last uh, factor can promote leaky blood vessels, which leads to swelling and shortness of breath. You can see here in the LEPS, which is a, a bacterial liposaccharide, um, has a, a, an extremely strong stimulating of innate and natural immunity. And when you uh, apply andrographolite in high dose or low dose, you can see that there is a significant reaction in this factor, in uh, either in the uh, RNN and also in the protein, both in, in both cases. And uh, the last here is the, that andrographolite is also able to protect from radiation, induced lung injury, inflammatory cell infiltration, pro-inflammatory cytokine release, and fibrosis. The alveolar hemorrhage here is indicated, and the thickness of the alveolar walls are indicated by arrows. And you can see here in the different weeks and in the control and in the presence of the different uh, um, um, concentrations of andrographolite. Now, if we go to the antiviral um, effect of paractin, uh, it shows uh, there are many studies indicating uh, different activities of uh, the compounds of paractin. For example, it has an activity on influenza A that triggers respiratory infections, including pneumonia, sinus infection, asthma, and so on. 
Also, it has antiviral activity on hepatitis B and hepatitis C that has to do with liver cirrhosis, fibrosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, and other types of um, uh, carcinomas. Uh, it has also antiviral effect on herpes simplex virus that is known to cause ulcers in the mouse, conjunctivitis, keratitis, and many other retinal necrosis and ocular uh, diseases. Then there is the Epstein-Barr virus that is known for causing mononucleosis, among other uh, diseases that are listed here in the screen. Then we have the human papilloma virus that is also, there is evidence and papers that indicate that it affects genital warts, cancer in cervical, vulvar, vaginal, and the oropharyngeal region. And finally, um, there is also evidence that uh, the actives of paractin have shown activity in human immunodeficiency virus uh, and also in the chikungunya virus, which causes um, um, fever, headache, rashes, myalgia, and polyarthritis. Uh, but in most cases, there are no symptoms. Uh, the Zika virus normally produces um, um, mild, mild symptoms. Uh, lately, also, andrographis has been, uh, there are now many uh, um, articles that indicate that the possibility that andrographis might uh, inhibit uh, the receptor, the AC2, of the COVID-19. And the uh, docking results show the very strong affinity of andrographolite with the receptor binding domain of the SARS CoV-2 virus with the RNA polymerase for transcribed in Cyanoma to survive in the cell and spread the infection. And lately, uh, this is a paper from phytotherapy research, and uh, this injection is a salt of andrographolite, and this was a study that was done in over uh, 300 patients. Uh, by the group in China, and um, uh, this was a multicenter prospective open label and randomized control trial. And uh, interesting results as the time to cough relief was reduced uh, in the cumulative rate, and also the time for virus uh, clearance uh, in the group that was giving the salt of andrographolite was. Uh, reduced in the clinics. Now, uh, what do we have on the pipeline of the clinical trials for the period 2020 and 2023? There is an ongoing study on osteoarthritis, but in our case, you know, we are doing a, an immune study uh, that is on the phase two that I will show you. And this is a double-blind, uh, randomized um, placebo control comparative study for assessing the efficacy and tolerability of paracting maggie care in individuals with upper respiratory tract infections. And it's done by the CRO, Vedic Life Science in, in India. And you can uh, look at it at clinical trial scope that's in the number of uh, to identify the trial. And then uh, there is a, a double blind randomized placebo control study of paratin in the prevention of common cold episodes in Como with patients during the quarantine period. And uh, that is done by the university in Chile and uh, the CRO Pfizer. Um, the primary objective of the first study is to evaluate 
uh, the severity of common cold-like symptoms that includes also a group of COVID-positive uh, patients as evaluated by the Wisconsin Upper Respiratory Symptom Survey 21 Total Severity Score. And uh, there are four groups with 240 patients total. One group is paracting alone. A second group is Maki Care of Aristotelia chilensis. Then there is a combo of uh, paractin and Maki Care. And the fourth group is a placebo. And there is um, many other uh, secondary outcomes that you can look uh, in the page of clinicaltrials.gov. Then there is, uh, the second one is to evaluate the preventive effect of paractin and the placebo on the incidence of common cold in patients with different diseases. And uh, the, the group one is uh, even uh, 150 milligrams of paractin for a period of four or five months, and the placebo receive the 150 milligrams of the non-active product. So paractin is a self-affirmed graph. It's, uh, we could uh, sum up that it supports healthy inflammatory response and also supports healthy immune response. Uh, Paracting is clean and sustainable, FBSE free, non bovine, shellfish free, egg shell free, non GMO, wing and wild crafted, non irradiated, TSA free, certified kosher and halal, and is also available in organic and conventional grass. So, uh, paracting fulfills this high demand. So thank you very much, and uh, we hope to meet you at the Supply Side West. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Honke, for such an informative presentation. So before we get started on the question and answer session, I'd like to remind our audience how to submit questions. Once again, you can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box which can be found on the right-hand side of the presentation window. And now on to our first question. Um, there are many A. paniculata extracts on the market. In what way is paractin different? Okay, this is a good question. Um, it is true that there are many different um, extract of um, Andrographis paniculata on the market uh, uh, with different standardization. Our extract is 50% uh, um, Andrographis paniculata, and uh, um, we uh, all our studies have been done with this extract. And uh, on the other hand, um, we know exactly also the non part that is uh, the rest of the 50%, we are also knowing what it contains. And it's important that when you have a standardization of a product, also uh, the active, the andrographolite, the deoxyandrographolite, and the neoandrographolite, the proportion in the HPLC, and the ratio how uh, it is in the extract. So, um, um, we can also relate this to the possible adverse events that you could find with um, the extract. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying. Now on to our next audience question. In the ongoing study on upper respiratory tract infections. What is the rationale for the combo Maki Care plus the Paractin? Well, Maki Care is um, an extract containing Aristotelia chinensis, uh, which is a um, fruit very rich in anthocyanin, particularly delphinidins. And uh, as this is known, anthocyanins, you know, are uh, present also in, in in fruits like uh, Sambucus nigra, which has shown 
uh, a great efficacy in controlling viral infection. There are about four studies indicating the effect on common cold. So from the point of view of the mechanism of action, we saw that a combination of uh, uh, andrographis, paniculata paractin, and the anthocyanins of Mackie care could, you know, uh, probably trigger different um, uh, mechanism of action and uh, have a um, um, synergistic and more efficacy of the COP. Yes, that makes sense. Thank you, doctor, for um, going in depth with that. Uh, so just one more time, um, if anyone needs a little bit of a reminder, um, you can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found on the right-hand side of the presentation window. And any questions that aren't answered during the presentation will be answered by the speaker at a later date, just if anyone needed a bit of a reminder there. Actually, I believe I spoke a little too soon. Unfortunately, we're out of time for today. But um, again, I want to thank the audience for attending and for participating in today's event. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor, HP Ingredients, for making today's educational symposium possible. And we'd like to ask everyone in the audience now to participate in a brief survey. And you can see the survey to the right of your screen. And you'll also be receiving an email alerting you when this symposium will be available for replay. And we invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Once again, thanks to all for joining, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.